my topic is introducing pocket classroom through mobile technology first of all i am to say my objectives the present paper attempts to provide a brief introduction to a wide variety of emerging mobile technologies that can be used to great effect in foreign and second language teaching next objective is the intention of the paper is to examine how these small devices with social networking capabilities can provide pedagogically useful functions in education especially for a language instruction some issues related to mobile learning why should the english teacher encourage their students to use mobile for learning second language second one does mobile really create learning atmosphere third one what is mobile learning and how it is useful to the english learners next one what is the role of a teacher in m learning and what is the role of students in mobile learning so first of all what is mobile learning so i am quoting from the wikipedia the learning that happens across location or that takes advantage of learning opportunities offered by portable technologies and apart from that mobile learning is the art of using mobile technologies to enhance learning experience more expansion definition of mobile learning learning using mobile devices learning while mobile learning using mobile web technologies and it's all about mobility of the learner first point is learning using mobile devices so we can use different mobile devices here i have shown some uh, devices like audio recorder ipod and tablet galaxy and different you know uh, blackberry other devices which can be used as mobile learning and learning while mobile whenever you are in train or in a bus or in a park you can use mobile technologies for learning for language learning that means learning as if you were in a state of mobile instead of that you can use mobile learning next one learning using mobile web technologies so i am giving the data from you know social media use in the year 2011 facebook is used by 640 million people next one myspace.com also used by 125 million people twitter linkedin and wikipedia flickr and so this is the you know social networking site that is used for the medium of language learning atmosphere next one is it's all about the mobility of the learner so whenever the learner is uh, very you know useful for their learning they can use mobile technologies whether at classroom whether at home whether in the park whether in any situation any time anywhere next one is ipads apps for language learners so ipad there are different apps and application is there for learning uh, foreign language so these are the list for ipads application like count to 10 2011 world uh, fact book word lens and so many apps is there for learning for his language so this is the concept of cc's of effective mobile learning according to sarpless and corlett in their 2012 uh, he mentioned three c's for mobile technology Uh, for the instruction for learning uh, uh, mobile technologies for example one is control construction and conversation so what is control A student must be allowed to have control over what they feel is comfortable learning learning that matches their needs preference preferences and styles and construction students use these mobile devices to construct meaning from the world around them whether they are in school or in the park and conversation the mobile devices also allow students a certain level of communication or conversation in and outside the school they are able to communication with their students with other teachers and remain in contact with the school in general and this is uh, a software which can be used for baby learning and the software name is my bilingual baby and this 
goes beyond simple list of words and phrases, unlike other teaching methods for babies and children. In this system, the baby is exposed to phonematically balanced words carefully selected by trained speech and language professionals. Next one. Even language reaches poor by mobile phone. In case of Bangladesh, uh, from BBC Janala, service are showing their mastermind to educate urban and rural people. So they introduce three or uh, point five minute you know, language classroom where they can use, you know, how to use uh, English language and how to spoke, so speak in, in general. So they introduce even the poor, poorer section of people in case of Bangladesh. Okay. Next one, Dr. Conrad defines five moments of learning needs as below. When learning for the first time, when wanting to learn more, when trying to remember, and when things change, and when something goes wrong. So this is a situation when we can you know, forward for uh, learning. And the paradigm shift for teacher-centric learning to student-centric learning. And here the case is, this is uh, the first picture is traditional classroom, where the teaching, teaching is going on under the tree. So this is the picture from Vishwabharati Santiniketan, and this also is still going on, such type of education is still going on. But in other case, the modern classroom, based on you can see the projector and everything. So how the paradigm shift and the education system changing. Use of mobile as tools, as assistants, as teachers, communication, and fun. And this is the slide that six slides, and everywhere there is yes. Necessity. Do students need to use mobile device in order to stu uh, study in different location? Yes. Because in case of mobile, we can use mobile anywhere, any place. Next one, portability. Can students take their technology to where they are or where they want to go? Yes. Usability. Can students use technology to access the interactive where they are or where they want to go? Yes. Next one, socialization. Do students have the opportunity to collaborate and or interact with instructors or peer online? Yes. Support. Do students have the opportunity to receive feedback, either computer generated or either meditated from the instructors or peers? Yes. And all five conditions centered for mobile learning, and that is possible only through mobile application. So what are the advantages for mobile learning? One is individualization. Next one is interaction and negotiation. M-learning can help overcome barriers of time and space, global understanding, motivation, Authentic task, enable reflection, allows personalization, collaborative learning, and too much engaging, no discrimination, and so on. And disadvantage. Basic technology knowledge and knowledge lack of interest. Mobile devices are very expensive. Mobile learning may cut the students from the classroom environment, no creativity in writing tasks, data charges and connectivity, technological barriers, and too much personal. So what are the tools we can use for mobile learning? Images, animation, video, social networking, virtual reality, blogs, wikis, podcasting, chats, etc. Next one. So as a teacher of language student, uh, teachers, we need to see that here I'm quoting two sentences. One, in case of doctors, doctors save lives. But in case of teachers, teachers make life. So from there, you can understand what is the importance of a teacher in a classroom. Next one, role of a teacher in aim learning. Familiar with the resources, anticipate technical problems and limitation, as a facilitator of learning, as guide, correspondent, motivator, and challenger, and the role of students in M-learning. Learn to interpret new information and experience on their own terms, 
consult meaning and assimilate new information through interaction and collaboration with someone other than the teacher, try to observe the things in mobile. So the future of education, the future of education is open. That is not based on, you know, only classroom. The future of education is social. That means interacting with the people. The future of learning is personal. And the future of learning is visual through multimedia and through different software. And the next one, the future of learning is mobile. So in my conclusion, I want to say that when mobile used to come in the first place, we use only for communication, only for texting messages and receiving messages. But nowadays, we are not using mobile only for communication. We are using mobile for learning a foreign language. It may be English or other than language. It is my topic of the, is a separate, a part of the, my uh, topic of the PhD. Lishmania uh, um, is a parasite. It belongs to the protoza flagellate. And hemophilagile, back, please back. Uh, it has a two space, Lishmania space, Tropica complex, Donovani complex, and the Mexican complex, Brazilian complex. Another space is the Tripanosoma space, Rhodesiense, Gambiense, and Crozi next. Hemophilagile, <coughs> they are hemophilia multiplied in blood and tissue, moved by flagellum. Uh, transmitted by an uh, arthropod, insects, the name of insect is the sand fly, called interested in microphage in humans, and the promasticot in meat gut, then provoxis of the sand fly. Next. This is a, a summary of life cycle in sand fly, amastic in blood or tissue joices. Uh, when take, when uh, sand fly take a mean, amastic in blood or tissue, uh, take it, change into the promosal in meat gut. After that, production binary production and uh, production by binary fusion, forward migration to pharynx, and after that, block of the proboxis by the promosty goat. Next. Next. Amosty goat are released from the ruptured macrophage, reinitiated, replicate, cycle in new macrophage. When amastic in macrophage are taken up by another sand fly, takes a blood mean, convert to the promastigot, and undergo binary fusion. Next, this life cycle ingested by macrophage, metamorphosis into the amastigot, reproduction by binary fusion, rupture of the parasite cell, infection further cell and uh, coral uh, parasitomized cell form it. Next. Clinical force, <coughs> cutaneous Lishmania or oriented soul, visceral Lishmaniasis or Kalaza, and mucocutaneous Lishmaniasis, new world. Next. Epidemiology of the Lishmania, and they begin 88 countries, 350 million people at risk of infection, each year, our, our prevalences of 12 million cases. Each year, uh, about 10 to, uh, 10 to 50 million cutaneous Lishmania and uh, half million visceral Lishmania cis. More than 90% of the visceral Lishmania cis are in India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sudan, and Brazil. Next. Diagnosis, clinical, laboratory, find the parasite from the material obtained by aspiration of the flow around, the age of the soul, and biopsy. Next. These are treatment. Next. Control treatment of the infected persons, the shelter reservoir host, sand fly control, and preventive measure, screening insect and repellent. Next. Different stage of vaccine developed. Different research have been employed for the generation of the vaccine against Lishmania, but to date, there is no vaccine against this parasite in routine use. The history of the Lishmania vaccine has been revised by different authors. Different stage of vaccine developed. 
First generation vaccine is live vaccine. Live vaccine has many secondary effects that make difficult the standardization of these approaches. Vaccine based on the killer promastigot we use in Iran were also analyzed. The result of the several clinical trials using whole parasite antigen show little or no protection. Next. Second generation vaccine is use of the uh, recombinant protein that were tested since <coughs> 1990. The Lishmania recombinant vaccine contains very acid alone in combination of or as polyprotein vaccine. Now we want to production uh, polyprotein vaccine. Uh, we use uh, five surface antigen, internal antigen, and secret antigen in GN2. Most of them needed to be formulated with actual. Next. Tire generation vaccine compared to the recombinant protein vaccine, the no vaccine has, are much more stable and have the advantages of the low cost of the production, no need of the cold chain for distribution is very important for vaccine, cold chain, and flexibility of the combined multiple genes in a simple construct. Next, conclusion, which means is a major cause of morbidity, morbidity and mortality. <coughs> Worldwide, an effective vaccine has the um, potential to control this disease, but despite its effort, but an effective vaccine is not available. Until now, it has, it has been numerous attempts to develop a, a successful vaccine against Lishmania this. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my paper is about the natural resource planning for regional development using uh, remote sensing and GIS. This present, uh, this present paper is intended to create the special information for natural resources with emphasis on a water resource in Ongol Mandel is my case study to develop the method for utilization and sustainability uh, using remote sensing and GIS. Before that, I start with my paper, I would, I'd like to uh, explain two concepts. I think it's very uh, useful to get the general concept of my paper. One of them is uh, sustainable development, and second one is remote sensing. Exactly what's the meaning of the, that two words? Sustainable development means integrating the economic, social, and environmental objective of society in order to maximize human well-being in the present without a reduction of the ability uh, for future generations. And second one, remote sensing is a science and art of obtaining information about the object, area, and phenomenon through, through an analysis of the data acquired by a device which is not in a contact with the object, area, and phenomenon. And finally, remote sensing of Earth's environmental includes measuring and recording of electromagnetic energy reflected from or emitted by the planet's surface and atmosphere. Uh, next, please. Next. Next. Yeah, objective. Uh, we have a two objects here. Uh, the first one is uh, preparing a uh, uh, thematic layers such as base map, drainage map, transport, transport map, land use, land cover, and uh, geomorphology map. And second one is uh, generating, the, genera generating the uh, action plan. Next. Uh, my case is the uh, Ongol Mandel is a part of uh, Parakosham district in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, Ongol is uh, one of the 56 uh, Mandal of Parakosham uh, district, and the area of uh, Ongol Mandel is approximately around uh, 208. Uh, 0.5 square kilometers. Next, please. Uh, here we have a, a topo sheet map of Ongol. Next. Uh, this is a satellite image from car to side of Ongol Mandel. Next. And also here, IRS P6, P6 list for remix of Ongol Mandel. Next, please. And here we have a location map, map of the Ongol. Next, please. Uh, material and metals. The methodology in my case and mainly involve the input of the spatial data concerning various map layers and uh, associated data. In addition, attribute and spatial data also. Next, please. Next. Uh, we don't have uh, that much time, but I have to uh, short. OK, next, please. 
Here we have a methodology of a flow chart of my paper. Next, please. We use the different kind of the parameters, like environmental parameters, economic parameters, and physical and also social parameters in this paper. Next, please. Uh, economic papers, economic parameters, uh, some kind of like uh, labor and food consumption, job opportunity, inflation, and something like that. Okay, next. Uh, physical parameters like hygienic institution, uh, final, uh, financial, and also road, bridge, and uh, electricity. Next. Social parameters like uh, population, education, uh, age, and work age, poverty. Next. Uh, here we have a result. The first one is a base map. A topographic map is a representation of the shape, size, position, and relation of the physical features of, of an area. Of an area base, a base map is prepared by using Survey of India with a scale of 25,000. It consists of various features like a road network, settlements, water body, canal, railway track, and else. Uh, next, please. Here we have a base map. Next, please. A drainage map is also some kind of like the uh, base map. Next, please. Here we have a uh, drainage map of the Ongol. Next. Also, transport, transportation is in the same way. Next. Here we have a map of the uh, transportation map. Here we have a different kind of the features like a national highway, metal road, unmetalled road, car truck, and a pack track. Please, next. Land use land cover. Land use land cover map is prepared by visual interpretation of high resolution satellite data with the Survey of India topographic map in 25,000 scale. The land use land cover categorized such, a, such as a built up land, agriculture, water body, wasteland, canals, rivers, roads, and tanks. Next, please. Here we have a map of the land use land cover related to Ongol. Next. This is a table for uh, land use land cover. Next, please. And uh, geomorphology lab, a geomorphology map is prepared also by, by visual interpretation of high resolution image. Next, please. Here we have a uh, geomorphology map. Next. Conclusion. In conclusion, finally, based on the thematic maps, we got the uh, action plan. Here, action plan is generated based on the integrated study of on a spatial and attribute data by the help of the field observation. In the study area, a total of nine check dams and two percolation tanks are suggested using ArcGIS software, including the uh, wasteland development and shelter belt strip plantation along the roads. This study has successfully demonstrated the utility of remote sensing using conjunction with the GIS technology for mapping and planning of a natural resource for uh, sustainable development. Next, please. Here, finally, we've got the action plan for Ongol. And I think next is, is, next is the last. No, no, next, please. Yeah, here recommendation. We have a seven recommendation for improve the situation and sustainable development and also improve the natural resources in, in non gold. Next, please, I think is the last the slide. Yeah, thank you very much. If you have some questions. No? Okay, thank you very much. I pursued it for my research and hopes of working it throughout my life. Uh, so the next, uh, if somebody can, please. The contents of this are the rational of selecting the topic, introduction to environment education, environmental education. Since I am from Department of Education, I would integrate environment into education, uh, which has been a part of B.Ed., D.Ed. and M.Ed. courses, uh, as well as in Ph.D. The objectives of environment education, sustainable development, results revealed in the study conducted for secondary school students and teachers in Hyderabad. The rationale for selecting this topic. Next. Considering education as an instrument to environmental sustainability, the United Nations in its General Assembly has proclaimed 2005 to 2014 as a decade of education for sustainable development. It aims at helping everyone learn the values, behavior, and lifestyles required for a sustainable future and societal formation. Now, I would like to define what's environment. The word environment is derived from the French word environner, meaning encircling or surrounding. 
or I would like to say it's called Mahul in Urdu. Environment is a sum total of water, air, land, interrelationship among themselves and with the human beings and other living organisms. This is what has been defined by Environmental Protection Act in 1986. Now, education is the first and foremost human right as proclaimed in the Article 26 of Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Education is a key to build up skills and capacities in all domains necessary for overall development. And education is regarded as a dynamic, ever-changing and ever-expanding process in which new development occur continuously. Now, let us correlate environment into education and that's called environmental education. It is an integrated discipline bringing in the different perspectives through the interrelationship between teaching and science, social studies and different aspects of the ecosystem. Environment education is seen as a process of adjustment to the environment and aims at enabling the individual to be in harmony with his surroundings. Next please. Now the objectives of this study are environment of this environmental education in my study are to establish and strengthen the relationship between man and environment to explain the causes and effects of environmental exploitation, to promote integration of environmental education into the curriculum at all levels starting from primary level to university education. Next please. Now these objectives are further carried over. To promote justice towards environment and other forms of life, to determine the extent of awareness about environment among students and teachers, to develop strategies of sustainable development. Just now sir was saying sustainable development about what it was in detail, uh, to respect all forms of life and conserve their habitats. Now next, what is sustainable development? Sustainable development is both a goal and a process. It looks into the integration of environmental, economic and social considerations. Sustainable development ensures development that optimizes human and natural welfare and integrity for present and future generations. It is that development which brings harmonious and dynamic balance. Next, please. Sustainable development requires a relationship between population, resources, and environment. It is a vision of progress and combines immediate and long-term objectives, local and global. Now, sustainable development stands for meeting the needs of present generations without endangering the ability of future generations. Now, next, the Venn diagram here shows the sustainable development and justice. Now, as our topic is science and technology and uh, uh, development and justice. So here you can see here when society is in uh, bearable conditions with environment, sustainable development takes place. When society and economy are equitable, then sustainable development takes place. When environment and economy are viable, then sustainable development takes place. Next please. Now the results revealed in the study conducted on secondary school students and teachers in Hyderabad. Uh, my research in the uh, Department of Education in the Department of uh, Education and Training. Uh, now, next, please. Uh, of course, it is uh, quite elaborate, uh, the questionnaires and uh, tools which I have used are four, but here I have just limited it according to the time slot given here. Now, here you are having gender-based analysis here. Uh, these are educational uh, objectives here, instructional objectives. You can see according to Bloom's taxonomy, what we teach in education. Knowledge, understanding, application and skill are the basic skills. Now, girls are more in knowledge, understanding and application. Boys are more skilled. This is what I have found in my study. Next, please. Students awareness in various domains. The domains of environment education have been divided into five parameters. Conservation of human health, conservation of wildlife and animal husbandry, conservation of soil, forest, air, etc. Causes of pollution and energy conservation. Here you can see the percentages of various and uh, the balance. And uh, next, please. Teachers awareness in various domains. Now, it is uh, teachers and students, so similar parameters. Uh, the study shows a pie diagram showing the same five parameters in teachers awareness. Now, next please. Uh, the next is uh, awareness in total. Sustainable development must be taken up by the society at large as a directive principle of, the, of every citizen. The aim of ecological sustainable development is to maximize human well-being without jeopardizing the life system of, uh, what you say, support system. The prime need for sustainable development is conservation of natural resources. Environment education awareness is a responsibility of every individual, local and global. 
Thank you one and all for giving this opportunity, especially Dr. Aziz Banu. Of my paper is Green Technologies and Sustainable Development. Next. As an introduction of this paper, I would like to quote the quotes of Charles Lindbergh. According to him, the accumulation of knowledge, the discoveries of science, the products of technology, our ideas, our art, our social structures, all the achievements of man mankind have value only to the extent that they preserve and improve the quality of life. Since this topic is relating to the uh, green technology and sustainable development, in that regard, I have tried to quote this particular quotation. Next. Now, economic development is closely linked with the energy development. Most of the world's commercial energy supplies are provided by fossil fuels with the associated emissions causing global environmental problems. It is feared that not only these levels of energy production and use from current energy sources are difficult to achieve, but also unsustainable. Therefore, energy use efficiency and contribution from clean energy sources needs to be increased to reduce adverse environmental impacts of energy uses. Next. Green energy offers a promising alternative to traditional energy sources. The fact that renewable energy accounts for only a modest proportion in meeting the world's energy demand means that there is a missing link in their potential and their implementation. And this missing link is the barrier in their, a barrier in between them. Now, uh, these barriers, either financial or non-financial, need to be identified and addressed in order to design innovative policy approaches for the international and domestic finance, financing or renewable energy technologies. Now, to prevent the mo next, please, to prevent the most, to prevent the most catastrophic outcomes of climate change, to build a sustainable society that are environmentally sound, socially just and economically viable requires bold and immediate action. New green technologies are discoveries coupled with new demand and forward thinking public policies that advance sustainability and encourage public private investment and that are to a starting to transform the economic landscape as products, services, jobs and oriented, which are oriented towards the future. Now, the green technology policy to provide direction and motivation to continuously enjoy a good quality and healthy environment should be based on four pillars, and these are these pillars are energy, environment, economy, and society. Schumacher stated that the non-violence of technology is an essential part of its appropriateness, suggesting that an appropriate technology should be completely under human control had no unintended side effects and in particular social or environmental disruption. Now, we, since we are talking about the green technology, so it is very much important to decide or to define what green technology is actually. Green technology is a broad term and a field of new innovative ways to make environmental friendly changes in our daily life. It is created and used in a way that conserves natural resources and the environment. The use of green technology is supposed to reduce the amount of waste and pollution that is created during production and consumption. Although it is very difficult to precisely define the areas that are covered by green technology, it can safely be said that green technology is the development and application of products, equipment, and systems used to conserve the natural environment and resources, which minimizes and reduces the negative impacts of human activities. Now, uh, so many uh, presenters have talked about sustainable development also. So I would like to give a brief light over the sustainable development also from the definition point of view. The World Commission on the Environment and Development, also known as the Brundtland Commission in their report, our common future introduced and defined the term sustainable development as the process in which the exploitation of natural resources, the allocation of investment, and the process of technological development and organizational changes are in harmony with each other for both current and future generations. Based on this context, sustainability is considered as a path forward that allows humanity to meet current environmental and human health, economic and societal needs without compromising the progress and success of future generations. Now, 
then we are going to decide about the green technology, which is used for the sustainable development, then it is very necessary to follow certain criteria. What should be the criteria so that the technology that is going to be selected is just and for the benefits of the society. Now, here, the selection of tools and techniques as an appropriate uh, technology is an important element uh, in deciding about, in deciding what the future should be like. In general, the seven criteria have been proposed to judge the appropriateness of the technology by Robert C. Wicklin in his paper entitled Design Criteria for Sustainable Development in Appropriate Technology. Technology as if people matter. Now, these criteria are, I'm not going to talk in detail, simply I would like to just name them. First criteria is system, system independence. It is the ability of the technological device to stand alone. It should not be dependent on so many things. Second one is the image of modernity. If you are going to use the technology, that should not create a feeling in the minds that we are going to be looking like the old age person's life. This is what it means to say. Similarly, there is individual technology versus collective technology. Cost of technology is another factor which needs to be considered. Then risk factor is, if the risk is minimal, it is going to be the best technology. Evolutionary capacity of the technology, single purpose and multi-purpose technology means what? Whether it is for the single individual or for the multi-purpose, et cetera. Now the next is the feasible technologies. The technologies that are available our hand, how much these technologies are going to use the renewable sources of energy so that the non-renewable sources of energy which are limited in their amount can be used for the future generations. Now, these feasible green technologies are, say, for example, solar photovoltaic technology, where the solar energy is converted into light energy by some modules, semiconductor modules. Then there is wind energy. Wind mill is utilized to catch up the wind and just generates, uh, rotates the generator and energy is converted, like all details are there. Then third one is the biofuel. Again. Next. Next. Two minutes. Biofuel technology is there. Biogas technology is there. Micro and small hydropower technology is there. Biomass technology is there. There are so many technologies, but the importance lies in the fact that how effectively and wise, how wisely we are going to utilize so that it creates least pollutions and maximum output is given. Now, however, when we are going to use these technologies, there are certain barriers that comes in between, in between the use of the technology as well as the policy makers who are to allow them. And these barriers are, say for example, bureaucratic, bureaucratic behavior. Next, please. Next, next. Since time is running short, I'm sorry. Yes, this. One such barrier is the bureaucratic behavior and turf battles. I am I. I will not allow this technology to be implemented because I am super. So if it does not pass through me, it is not going to be used. Situation like that. Another one is the misconception about what sustainability means. Actually, no one is in a position to clearly define what sustainability means. And as a result of that, technologies or green technologies are not being allowed to be used. Similarly, there is a lack of international integration and controlled market and economies. Corrupt use and misuse of development and assistance of funds. Lack of sustainable development role models. Privatization versus sharing of knowledge. Now there are certain recommendations. One recommendation in this regard is this, that generate new sources of revenues to fund green technologies. One. Now, the, another recommendation is intensify dialogue on existing national green policies. Whatever green policy is in existence, if you get the knowledge from the others, try to modify it immediately so that it will be implemented for the benefits of the general peoples. And third recommendation is as per new international cooperation on green technologies. Now, cutting short all sorts of details, now I will straight away come to the conclusion. The environmental protection resource conservation and addressing other socio-economic aspects for sustainable development are essential. The green initiatives adopted for resource conservation and environmental pro protection shall help sustain higher economic growth rate necessary to fulfill basic needs with some acceptable quality of life in future. 
According to Brundtland Commission 1983, sustainable development is the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Sustainable development that is respectful of the social equity and environmental healthiness may occur only when it gets a stronger international awareness and large scale changes into tendencies in production and consumption patterns. Recognizing the debilitating and even devastating impact of climate change, countries all over the world should pledge to reduce their contribution to the climate by cutting down carbon dioxide emission. To move towards sustainable development, policymakers should consider not only domestic economic concerns, but also the major scientific and technological challenges affecting all countries. Efforts should be made to align economic development policies with the goal of increasing the realization of human capabilities. Now, with the course, I'm going to finish it. In a very real sense, the land does not lie. It bears a record of what men write on it. In a larger sense, a nation writes its record on the land, and a civilization writes its record on the land, a record that is easy to read by those who understand the simple language of the land. This is recorded by Dr. W. C. Milk, Milk, 1953, former assistant chief, U.S. Soil Conservation. Last one is please. Thank you.